Um, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Um, hi, everybody, again. Uh, thank you so much for joining. My name is Hamida Khatri. I am originally from Pakistan, but I am in the United States. I am um, currently doing my Master's of Science in Information Systems, Engineering and Management. Um, I am really honored to be here live. Uh, with an amazing group of women who I really look up to uh, from Pakistan. Um, in Jojo Apni communities Banaya in their respective um, you know domains. It's it's been incredible to see their journey. Me new who into the tech domain and seeing that there are so many amazing women out there um, who are like role models for me, I'm truly honored to be here to be speaking to them right now. Um, we have with us uh, Huma Hamid, uh, Shamim Rajani, Faiza Yusuf, and Ramla Qureshi. I'll just give everybody a um, brief introduction, and then we'll start off with the questions. Um, so uh, Shamim Rajani is the COO at Gentech uh, Solutions, a technology company dedicated to providing end-to-end -end IT solutions and services to its global audience. She's the founder of uh, Code Girls, a member of CEE, CEC at Pasha, and leading their diversity and webinar committees. Uh, she's also an advisor for PAC, uh, Women in Tech, uh, PK. Uh, we have with us Huma Hamid. Uh, she is a tech maker by heart and a volunteer by soul, with a passion for building digital products, uh, platforms, teams, and communities. She is currently part of the platform technology group within Cisco as a technical product manager and the co-founder and former president of Pakistani Women in Computing. Um, Faiza Yusuf uh, is a technologist with over 10 years of experience in building products and teams. She is the founder of Women in Tech PK, uh, co-founder of Code Girls and a product management consultant. Um, Ramla Qureshi is a structural and en earthquake engineer. That was actually pretty, <laughs> a little <laughs> difficult for me to uh, understand. We'll talk more about that. Um, she's a structural and earthquake engineer, a PhD researcher in structural resilience against natural and man-made hazards. She is also the founder and COO, CEO of Women Engineers Pakistan, a Fulbright alumna and an American Association of Women University Women Doctoral Fellow. Oh my God, reading scripts is a little oh, weird. Anyways, um, welcome ladies. I'm so, so, so happy to be here with you all. How are you feeling? Great. Good, Good to be here. Good to be here. Thank you. Um, so I'll just start off with a very generic question and asking you uh, to briefly respond to that. And then one by one, I'll ask everybody, you know, the, the questions respective to their, um, to their communities, the ones that they, they have built. So the first question I want to know is, um, you all have built a community in your respective domains. Um, what can you tell the audience about community leadership? What has motivated you? And what has your journey been like um, throughout? We can start off with Ramla. Sure. Um, so in all honesty, when I started off, I never knew I was building a community. I was just reaching out really. And I did not realize the points that I was raising um, and this is back in 2013. I was uh, um, just, you know, a couple of years into the workspace. I was confused. I did not know what was going on because I was a pretty good student. And then all of this friction that started happening in the workplace, being a woman, being an engineer, uh, it was really difficult to manage this new space. And I was all I was doing was reaching out um, and asking for help from from people that I thought were like minded. Or I don't know, kya hua, ek dam se it sort of snowballed. A lot of women aligned with my questions. A lot of women aligned with the points that I was raising. And I felt validated. A lot of times people tell you, okay, ignore kareji, SNHLTE kaam. But when I got this massive amount of support from women and girls 
like me, who looked like me as well, um, that is where the community actually sprung into action. That's amazing. I really like the fact that you mm -hmm. that you chose these two words, uh, validated and reaching out, because that's something that you know people tend to miss out sometimes. Um, and I'm really glad that you brought that up, um, Faiza. Um, what would you like to say to the audience? Hmm. About the community, Women in Tech PK, actually, same story. I did not also know that it is going to be something what it is today. Um, I started from a Facebook group, and the idea was I was um, working as a visiting professor at different universities, and there were very few girls in my classes. And most of them uh, were really confused about what is going to happen to them when they go to the industry because there were no role models for them. And uh, I've been in the industry for 10 years and I know a lot of role models. So my idea was to basically connect, um, you know, upcoming women in tech with women who are already in tech. And we started from a Facebook group and then it's been almost four years and, you know, rest is history. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing to know. Thank you. Um, Shamim? Yeah, I think uh, uh, most of us will have the same story. But I just want to add to what Ramla said and what Pfizer said. Uh, validation and reaching out is one thing. I think the third thing was finding the right gap in the market, the problem. You know, so we're always solving solutions because there's a problem in the market, right? So um, identifying the problem is really important. When I started out, in the IT industry, and I think I'm the eldest one here, around 21 years ago. So, Uswat, the, the only role model that I could find in the Pakistan tech industry was Jahan, the only one, right? And as I grew my company and um, um, genetic, right, my one woman company, there were a lot of problems that I faced as a woman. Uh, to the point that I stopped working in the Pakistan corporate or the, or, the, or the local industry and I opted to work outside of Pakistan. Not that I didn't find biasness there, but uh, uh, it was a lower form of bias. There was biasness, but not to the extent. You know, you're sitting behind the table, you're running an IT company. So that was one of the problems. The other problem that I identified very later on is when I started to hire more women in, in the workforce. So first of all, finding the right women was a problem. The other was keeping them uh, on board was a problem. And the third and the most important that I realized was the complaints that they brought to me. I just couldn't believe it because I have never done a job myself to be on that side of the the you know, table ke bhai, aapne, uh, 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 problem that women face in workplaces. And when they came to me and the, they said the reason we are we like working at genetic is because there's a woman CXO is when I started to learn what the problems were in the industry. So that was one of the things that motivated me to start Code Girls. The other most important thing is that I also uh, thought that women need to be more on the, um, women need to understand their capabilities to be able to handle STEM and coding, which they don't. Right, so would you imposter syndrome? So we started to look at it from that direction, and uh, that is how Code Girls was born. Then again, the same thing, the same story. We were planning 200 girls in a year. We ended up doing what? Five? How many? 400? 500? I don't know. Something like that. So because there was a gap in the market, right? And then so many good people who joined hands with, including Faiza and Muhammad bin Sattar, who had everything fully started. And we have been around for a while. So it's very nice and very warming to see all these faces that you've been working with. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm I'm so glad that you brought, you know, all the all the issues that you faced in, in starting your community. We'll we'll talk more about that. Um I want Huma to give us her um, you know, um story as to how, you know, um what what motivated her and what has her journey been like uh in building a community. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Amida. And I think it, uh, I'll, it's kind of similar to what Faiza and Ramla said that I did not know how big it will become and how much it will resonate. 
Um, however, my journey has been, um, it, it kind of started in 2009. That's when I was working in, um, in, in Pakistan in tech. And uh, there was a time that I was trying to find, um, you know, मुझे ये नहीं पता था कि वो जेंडर गैप है या कौन सा गैप है बस मुझे ये पता था कि देर समथिंग मिसिंग राइट मुझे मुझे आगे बढ़ना है अपने करियर में या मुझे लर्निंग करनी है लेकिन मुझे बहुत कम सपोर्ट सिस्टम नजर आया और उस वजह से सो आई आई स्टार्टेड यू नो एंगेजिंग माय सेल्फ इनटू ऑल दीज डिफरेंट कम्युनिटीज जो उस वक्त भी एग्जिस्ट करती थी सो आई वाज पार्ट ऑफ आई ट्रिपल ई एसीएम जिस भी शेप एंड फॉर्म में कोई एक ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल जो कि लर्निंग या ग्रोथ से रिलेटेड है तो उसमें आई यूज्ड टू गेट इनवॉल्व सो आई वाज आई आई वाज पार्ट ऑफ डिफरेंट सोसाइटीज कम्युनिटीज एंड आई वाज आल्सो व्हेन आई वाज यू नो in 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 final year of nast uh, so i was also president of community service which was a different focus but still i had this thing uh, going on for a very long time in my life um so in 2009 a friend of mine he he was working here in the bay area and he introduced me to the grace hopper uh, conference which is one of the largest uh, conference for women in computing and sitting in islamabad i thought wow i never thought that you know we needed a uh, women or a gender specific group um so i started volunteering with uh, you know uh with the conference as a as a technical reviewer um so when i came to to the us that's when i actually um and um you know phir uske baad zahir hai aapka ek transition ek as a as a first generation immigrant there is another level of transition jo ki mai ek dafa pehle kar bhi chuki thi england mein lekin working environment mein it's a completely different story uh so that's where uh, so i started going to all these conferences and i was really amazed you know at the work that everyone was doing uh jahan se do cheeze wahan pe uh, factor bani thi ek to ye ki gsc pe jaane ke baad jahan pe aap hazaron khawateen se ya uh, you know tech uh, se related logon se milte hain wahan pe koi pakistan ki representation nahi thi so that was one of the you know biggest factor har saal pakistan se do teen log scholarship holders aate the wahan pe aur main har kisi ko host bhi karti thi milti bhi thi ja ke dhoond dhoond ke unko chalo aur lunch kare chalo aur dinner pe chale lekin usse zyada koi ek collective effort nahi thi so ek ye bahut bada motivating factor tha dusra jo tha wo ye tha ke i was blown away at the you know at the at the number of you know quantity of people at the conference and the quality of work that they were doing and that was just eye opening for me tab ja ke mujhe apne jo kuch gaps jo mujhe apni student life mein nazar aaye apni work life mein nazar aaye tab mujhe samajh aayi ki wow this is so relevant for example uh, coding ka jo baaki sab kehte hain ki coding hai, you know i had that syndrome mujhe wo beintaha you know beintaha wo tha fear tha coding se ab ja ke khatam hua hai because now i realize it was more of a mental barrier you're not not something it had nothing to do with my mental ability uh, so it that was one thing that i realized and it was amazing you know ke uh, uh, wo wo exist karta hai dusra um uh, shairal sandberg jo ke uh, facebook ki uh, you know she's uh, i think ceo she, uh, chief operating officer and that it was that time when she launched her book lean in and she was there at the conference and she was you know uh, sharing her journey and she said something like usne apna ek chhota sa wo share kiya ki jisme wo apne office mein do jackets rakhti hai aur ek jacket hamesha uski wahi pe you know she used to hang taki logon ko ye na lage ki wo jaldi ghar chali gayi apni family ke paas and i remember doing it as a as a mother i remember doing it uh that's when it resonated that's when it i it clicked ke, oh wow this was missing and that's why i was doing all the things and uh, so uh in, in our case i think in pwic's case it was uh started as you know personal realization then just like faiza i created a facebook page in 2015 and in 2018 i found uh, i met uh, fara and that's when it just you know it just took on the organizational path and then we started engaging everyone uh, but it was pretty much the same journey that faiza felt that ramla felt and what shamim is 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 sharing thank you so much huma for sharing that i i feel like uh har kisi ek ek need hai jo ki missing hoti hai you know there's like a gap that's that's there which needs to be filled and you're the person who's actually trying to fill that gap you know you're trying to bring 
uh, the 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 people you know who are going to support you in that in that respective you know um, in that respective gap you know to be filled. So thank you so much, everybody, for sharing your amazing journeys. Uh, there's so much to to learn. Um, so my first question, um, you know, individual question is for Ramla. Um, I want you to tell the audience how you decided to create Women Engineers Pakistan and and why. What exactly motivated you? And where is it situated? Is it in Pakistan or is it in the U.S.? Uh, what's the so um, honestly, Women Engineers Pakistan for me was a long time coming because there were several different incidences that happened that now sitting today, I can look back and see, okay, that is perhaps what prompted me to start this thing. Uh, I can name a few of those incidences. I remember the first day of university at NAST, we had this very benevolent teacher who um, told us that we civil engineering girls. What are you doing here? And I don't know what came on over me. And I just blurted out that this mentality is wrong for So, and, and I, to, to the end, to graduation day, all four years, all the boys in my class made fun of me. Okay, anytime I lost heart, ke yaar, ye baut mushkil hai, mujhse nahi ho raha, si a jayega, blah blah blah. My friends would remind me, didn't you have to prove this mentality wrong? So that sort of became my armor, right? That sort of became my motto. Okay, acha ab to kar ke dikhana. Then um, I was perhaps one of the very few people in the cohort of graduating civil engineers who had um, three job offers before they'd even graduated. So I was sometimes finding myself negotiating with uh, prospective employers. And that was very strange for me because I had spent the last four years doubting myself because that was what my professors were telling me in class literally every other day. That was what the mindset was in my head. Um, and then... I did decide to go with a multinational company in Pakistan. They had this trainee engineer program and the, the incentive to get out of, to, to, to really learn the ins and outs of the companies was that if you do well and you score well in that trainee engineer program, you get to be placed at any um, location of your liking. And I wanted to be placed at a site in Abu Dhabi. And lo and behold, I did amazing. I topped that batch of engineers and I was told that you can't send us to Abu Dhabi. And it came as a, as a very like blatant shock that this is what I mean, I did so well and shouldn't it be fair and square? And I vividly remember um, this, lady, this, this guy telling me that the company has no liabilities. Nahi and wow. it, it, was, it was like a harsh truth in my staring me in my face because I was thinking all is well, I'm doing really good. Then I started looking for other places. Um, I remember this one place in Karachi, um, they really wanted me there because my little bit of experience really resonated with what they were looking for, but they were all men and they did not have any female toilets. <laughs> and wow. I that's the not. ultimate, that, that's yes. the ultimate, you know, truth. <laughs> Yes. Um, and and I mean, as you can see, it's it's like a domino effect of things that are happening around you. You graduate thinking you're going to change the world and then the world starts hammering on you. Um, simultaneously, lots of other things were happening. I was starting to get bored in the place that I was working at. Um, people were constantly doubting my abilities. So there was a lot of weird things happening. And I remember one day I was particularly bored and I started a Facebook page and I called it Women Engineers Pakistan with the sole purpose that I will share articles here just because, you know, knowledge and I don't have an outlet to share all that knowledge with. Um, literally less than a month, 
into that page, I was going to different schools, talking to, um, to I was doing a, a, a project assignment in Lahore at that time. And I decided to go to a couple of schools and just talk to young girls and see what's going on today. What's situation in schools? Ki? And then literally one week later, the U.S. Embassy reached out to that page and said, oh, we have a female engineer from NASA coming over and we want to meet your team. And I did not have a team. It was just me running the office all the show. And I, I still remember that I went to my colleagues, my two or three female colleagues, and I said, can you pretend to be my team at Women Engineers Park? So for this one day, I really want to go meet this lady from NASA. I mean, not, hey, hello. Just to... <laughs> this is like... Oh, yeah. like right? So, I mean, that day, sitting in... Um, the PACCA auditorium in Karachi, I realized that this is a huge gap. And I'm sitting on something very important. That was back in 2013, early 2013. Um, and that is when I said, no, we need to create a formal organization where people take us seriously, where we reach out, where we become a, a conduit all the way from you know, fixing problems at school levels to all the way to, like Shami mentioned, to retention at professional levels. QK, I didn't see any bosses, any female bosses. I had one female boss and she was amazing. But I constantly saw this slew of vitriol towards her. I mean, from their mode of transportation, everything was judged in the office. And you would think, you know, culturally, we assume that men don't gossip. Oh God, that reality was shattered badly in front of my eyes. How, how badly men gossip in Pakistani working community. So I'll, I, I literally sat and I decided, okay, I need folks to mobilize this. Um, and we will not be a student club. We will not, we will be a legal, regular organization that has, you know, legal standing. And that's where a lot of this push towards, um, you know, legitimizing a movement towards gender balance and gender parity in STEM fields came from. And so far, I mean, we've interacted all the way from, you know, grassroots, Gali Mohalleke schools, all the way to, you know, government of Pakistan, uh, or World Bank, or UN. So, so it's, I guess it's a testimony to how much this was needed back then and how fast it snowballed and resonated, like someone else mentioned, with women across the country. UK, right now we exist in, what, eight cities? We've outreached over 4,000 young girls. Um, wow. and, and none of that was easy, but it all goes to show K how much ground there's still left to be covered. I still remember I went for outreach in my youngest sister's school in Karachi and there was a teacher, a male teacher. This was an all-girls school. There was this, this male teacher was hired to teach them computer science. Um, I went there for outreach. I was still waiting to be called into the classroom where this male professor called me out and said, I'm not going in se kuch nahi hona. And I was so shocked and so angry that you are a teacher. If you have this mindset, you will be able to do This will be a confirmation bias. It's a yeah. prophecy waiting to be made true. Because you are constantly telling them that you will be able to So I, I hope as we move through other questions, I can uh, elaborate more about what we do and all the processes that we have in Women Engineers Pakistan. Um, and, and yeah, to answer that question, we're based in Pakistan. We we work solely in Pakistan at the moment. We have had some projects in Nepal. Um, and I personally have worked a little bit with um, IEEE in the USA as well. But most of our work is very local and very much community-based as well. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing with us the motivation for for building a community that you did um there are so many you know gaps there's so much that a woman has to face and go through to to do something that you know she thinks is missing in in in, in the community so i'm i'm so happy to to have heard your story literally 
Um, I'm going to move to Faiza and ask her about her community, uh, Women in Tech PK. Um, can you tell the audience what basically, um, you know, was the reason for starting Women in Tech? I know you touched upon, you know, like that there was, you know, something that, that was missing, there was a gap, but could you add more, um, you know, substance to to what really dra drove you to to do that? And how how did people join your group? And now I'm also part of the community. I see there are so many women, um, you know, from Pakistan, you know, who are, who are part of the community. So can you shed more, uh, shine more light um, on that, please? Sure. Um, thank you, Hamida. And a lot of things that uh, Ramla mentioned. So I was just nodding because being there, um, similar stories. Uh, yeah. So for Women in Tech PK, I, as I um, told you guys, I, uh, I started because I wanted to connect my students with uh, role models in the tech industry. Um, but then another thing happened was uh, was that I saw that I was part of a few tech groups on Facebook. And then one day I realized that I'm only I'm the only woman who basically put comments on different posts about technology and nobody else says anything. And then I spoke to one of the community moderators and I asked her that, you know, uh, group mein mujhe kafi sari nazar aari hai, but koi kuch kehta kyun hai. And, uh, uh, you know, jab bhi koi tech discussion ho hai, to usually men are taking over the conversation, but we have so many women in tech, why aren't they visible? And she said that most of the girls have faced um, some kind of heckling while they are trying to explain something. In a lot of cases, men start sending them friend requests or start sending them inbox messages, uh, telling them that you're stupid or you shouldn't be in tech and stuff like that. And that it's very difficult for women to participate in public life. So think about it. It's online. It's not even a woman getting out of her house and being part of a debate that men are part of. It's just her sitting at her place and trying to participate in, in, in a virtual public life. And it was extremely weird to hear that like someone who's also educated, who's also part of technology, who may or may not be an engineer can, um, you know, do something like that. And from that, we decided that we want to make the community women only. And we want women to take the lead in the discussions and just make sure that they all talk to each other and connect with each other. Another problem that I experienced or I basically heard from other women was that um, every time they ask a question on a forum, uh, people started with a, people start responding by saying condescending things about women. So they were unable to get the answers that they were looking for. So what we did is that we, we decided that even though I've received a lot of backlash on this, uh, a female only community and um, being very rigorous about um, not letting men in uh, but i'm okay with that because as i as i told shameem that i i i read in a wonderful book that the writer said that for inclusion to happen you need to have meaningful exclusion so if everybody's part of the group nobody's part of the group so you have to make sure that you create a safe space so that people can talk to each other and discuss things um so we made sure that it's it's you know women only another thing that we saw was um women were kind of in, in in the kind of society that we live in um women are kind of pitched against each other in the sense that you know she's the queen bee and nobody can get there so they they did not like to they do not like to co collaborate with each other or work with each other together so we also wanted to kind of break that stereotype so we started pushing people that oh you are looking for a co-founder go put it on the community you are looking for a study partner go put it on the community and started meaningfully connecting women with each other so that you know they start working together and that really worked well and also like informal mentorship so a woman would come up and say that i need help in some area and i'm uh, usually it's me or shamim or sometimes uh yumna we'll tag another woman that we know is working in the same area and ask her that can you guide her and then you know they'll take the conversation sometimes on the comments or sometimes you know a, a private conversation and that really helps in um, basically making them realize that uh, we are not competing with each other. And it's not about uh, one position and 7,000 women in the community. It's like 
a million jobs and you can take whatever you want and you just need to you know uh, work on yourself and improve and learn new things so that was the idea that was the motivation and from there we started doing a lot of projects for building digital footprint of these women um we started uh, publishing you know twitter list of women that everyone should follow we started doing a lot of interviews we started giving them space to do um guest post about their journey in tech on 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 you know our website and stuff like that so this idea was to just give them an opportunity to just be themselves and not get scared about someone telling them that you know you shouldn't be in tech or in or you're stupid that's that's amazing i really resonate with you when you say that you know once once a woman starts posting things and stuff like that you know openly there are men who kind of you know come bashing in and you know saying things because it has started to happen with me now and i'm just like i'm getting all these requests from random people that i don't know these guys their names sound weird their pictures sound weird their their whole profile looks weird and i'm just like what what is going on so that issue still exists and you know it's really hard to kind of you know try to filter that out so thank you so much for bringing so many you know like pain points you know up in this conversation um my question next qu- question is for um huma um huma um pakistani women in computing you touched upon you know your reason for for building that you know you found a gap apne ghc ka suna apne unke sath kaam kiya and then you know you started building this community for women uh in tech i wanted to i want you to tell the audience what basically um the the challenges that you faced initially you know in starting off uh pwic and have you been able to overcome those challenges now you know after after you know so many years of it uh being um launched right yeah um so i think um uh, when i started in with a facebook page in 2015 i was very much focused on the pakistan side of things i was living in the us but i was focusing back home because i just you know it the pain resonated pain in the sense uh कि यहाँ इतनी सारी अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं पर वहाँ पे एक्सेस नहीं है या वहाँ पे नॉलेज नहीं है वहाँ पे लर्निंग नहीं है वहाँ पे ग्रोथ सो मेरे बहुत सारे जो इनिशिएटिव्स या मोटिवेशन है वो बहुत लर्निंग और ग्रोथ सेंट्रिक है सो उसके अंदर जब जस्ट लाइक रमला मैंशन आई स्टार्ट यू नो आई बंजर फ्रेंड्स वी स्टार्ट पोस्टिंग ऑन फेसबुक पेज लेकिन एक चीज जो मैंने नोट की उसमें वो ये कि जब भी कोई ऐसी स्टोरी होती थी जो पाकिस्तान से रिलेट करती थी तो बहुत ज्यादा लाइक्स आते थे जब वही स्टोरी या वही अगर आप कोई आर्टिकल बताते हैं लीडरशिप पे या यू नो कोई कोई और सब्जेक्ट पे लेकिन अगर वो वो अगर ग्लोबल पर्सपेक्टिव को शो करता है तो उस पर एक क्लिक नहीं करता था एंड देन आई दैट वाज रियली सरप्राइजिंग फॉर मी कि यू नो अगर यहाँ पे बिल एंड मिलिंडा गेट्स कुछ कर रहे हैं या अगर यहाँ पे जो है वो शेल सैंड पर कुछ कर रही है तो वो क्यों हाँ पीछे रेजोनेट क्यों नहीं करा एंड दैट्स वेन इट बिकेम रियली यू नो दैट्स वन आई रियलाइज के कम्युनिटी का जो एक कॉन्सेप्ट वो लाइक माइंडेडनेस भी है लेकिन वो शायद बहुत सारे लोग देखने में भी अगर आप उन जैसे लगते हैं तो वो मैसेज उस तरह से जो है वो रेजोनेट नहीं करता सो वहां से आई थिंक एक जब सो वेन फरा एंड आई गॉट कनेक्टेड उससे पहले पी डब्ल्यू आई सी वॉज लाइक अ पेज वी वर ओनली पोस्टिंग एजुकेशनल इंफॉर्मेशनल ऑल दीज आर्टिकल्स लेकिन उस फरा के आने के बाद शी वॉज ऑलरेडी रनिंग नॉन प्रॉफिट सो शी हैड एन आइडिया कि किस तरह इस चीज को एक प्रॉपर यू नो एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में कन्वर्ट करना है सो सो दैट गेव गेव अस यू नो अ डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन हाउ एवर जो पहली चीज मैंने करनी शुरू की हुई है कि हम उस वक्त बहुत ही नया हम लोग की सारों की आपस में यू नो ट्राइंग टू गेट टू नो ईच अदर इन जीएचसी पे हम दोबारा मिले सारे एंड दैट्स व्हेन वी रियलाइज कि एवरीबॉडी शेयर्ड देयर स्टोरी सो व्हाट आई डिड आई आई वाज स्टेइंग एट एन एयरबीएनबी एंड एन आई इनवाइटेड ऑल द यू नो एवरीवन फ्रॉम यू नो द अटेंडिंग जीएचसी एंड दे ऑल केम एंड वी स्टार्टेड शेयरिंग आवर स्टोरीज एंड और अगले दिन मैंने जाके वो स्टोरीज आई थिंक मैंने पब्लिश की पेज पे एंड दे जस्ट क्लिकड एवरीबॉडी वाज लाइक 
excited about ke, oh i feel that way or i can you know this this sounds so familiar so waha se ek stem stories ka ek initiative shuru hua jisme then i started reaching out to different friends different colleagues uh, ke aap bataye ki aap kaise you know aap tech mein kaise aaye aapne kya kiya और वहां से मुझे लगा कि वो एकदम लोगों में बहुत सारा इंटरेस्ट पैदा हुआ एक तो विजिबिलिटी बहुत सारी मिली और ये स्टीरियोटाइप भी ब्रेक हुई कि अच्छा कोडिंग नहीं करती या इंजीनियर नहीं है या सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट में नहीं है क्योंकि जब आप जैसे ही आप इधर सिलिकॉन वैली में या सियाटल में आते हैं तो बहुत सारे हैं सो so, uh, वो एक अलहदा एस्पेक्ट था सो so, चूंकि हम लोगों का अब मेरे पास दोनों आप कह लो कि एक्सपोजर थे मेरे पास पाकिस्तान में रहने का भी था यहाँ अमेरिका में भी और तो मुझे जो गैप ज्यादा लगा वो ये लगा कि ग्लोबली कनेक्टेड नहीं है हम हम लोग यस पाकिस्तान में अपने मसले हैं लेकिन यहाँ पे भी जो आते हैं हम जब यू नो ट्रांजिशन एक एक स्टेज है यहाँ की जो टेक इंडस्ट्री है इट्स वेरी कम्पेटिटिव इट्स वेरी अग्रेसिव उसमें और यहाँ पे जेंडर कार्ड उस तरह से है भी नहीं हम पाकिस्तान में तो कह देते हैं कि अच्छा आप खातन के बारे में लेकिन यहाँ पे वो उस तरह से नहीं यू हैव टू यू हैव टू परफॉर्म यू हैव टू शो मे बी एक्स्ट्रा सो उसके अंदर देन सो हमारी जो फॉर्मेशन है दैट्स 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 हाउ इट बिकेम ग्लोबल क्योंकि जितने भी फ्रेंड्स थे जो जो यूनिवर्सिटीज में पढ़ रहे थे या किसी और मुल्कों में रहते थे दे स्टार्ट पेंगिंग हम यहाँ यू नो हमारी भी यहाँ पे विजिबिलिटी हो सकती है सो आई थिंक इन केस ऑफ पी डब्ल्यू आई सी वॉज अ कलेक्टिव विजडम I I do not take credit of what it is today, and I do not want to say कि ये सारा का सारा मेरा ही idea था नहीं इसमें जैसे जैसे हम लोग सारे इकट्ठे होते गए different लोकेशन से फॉर एग्जाम्पल आसमा इन बर्लैन जन्नत एन स्वीडन एंड ऑस्लो में पूरी टीम शमीन को पता है कि और इन्होंने पूरा पार्टिसिपेट किया सिलिकॉन वैली में नवेरा दुबई से सो इस्लामाबाद में सबा लाइक एवरीबडी ऐसे लगा कि जैसे एक 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 करके जो है वो सारे इकट्ठे होते गए सो so, जो मेरा आई थिंक ज्यादा फोकस था वो ये कि हम ग्लोबली कनेक्ट करें क्योंकि यहाँ अपॉर्चुनिटीज बहुत हैं जो कि पीछे उस तरह से नहीं पहुंचती या अगर पहुंचती भी हैं तो हमारा जो सक्सेस रेट है उन अपॉर्चुनिटीज को टैप करने का वो इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे अभी उस नहीं पहुंचा तो इसलिए जब भी कोई स्कॉलरशिप आता है ना सिर्फ ये कि हम अपने ग्रुप पे पोस्ट करते हैं बल्कि इनकरेज करते हैं कि प्लीज यू नो अपना अपना रिव्यू के लिए भेजें हम अब हम में से बहुत सारे लोग हैं जो रिव्यू कर सकते हैं आपकी सी वी रिव्यू कर सकते हैं आपका मॉक इंटरव्यू कर सकते हैं क्योंकि ये वो ग्राउंड रियलिटीज हैं जिसके अंदर बहुत सारी खातन मैं ये नहीं कहती कि सिर्फ खातन बहुत सारे यू नो आई थिंक इट्स इट्स इट हैज शायद फीमेल ज्यादा करती है लेकिन मेल्स में भी ये चीज एग्जिस्ट करती है कि हम ओपनली जाके इन अपॉर्चुनिटीज के बारे में या अपने जो हमें लगता है कि हमारी वीकनेसेस हैं हमारी प्रोफाइल में हम उनको जाके कभी पूछने में जरा हिचकचाहट महसूस करते हैं सो कुछ जो प्रोग्राम्स पीडब्ल्यूआईसी के राइट नाउ पीडब्ल्यूआईसी इज बेस्ड इन 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 यू नो इन टोटलिटी जो जो हमारी ऑफिशियल रिप्रेजेंटेशन है वो तो यूएस में है इट्स अ इट्स अ 51c3 नॉन प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन रजिस्टर्ड इन द यूएस बट ग्लोबली वी हैव 10 चैप्टर्स एंड आई कीप हियरिंग देयर मोर यू नो मोर एंड मोर चैप्टर्स कमिंग और लीडरशिप टीम जो ऑफिशियल लीडर बोर्ड मेंबर और लीडरशिप है वो अगेन इट्स इन द यूएस बट लोकल लीडरशिप जो है वो अगेन इट्स दस डिफरेंट चैप्टर्स में प्रोग्राम्स में मेंटरिंग पे वी हैव अज फोकस विजिबिलिटी पे भी फोकस है इसीलिए आपको बहुत सारे इस वक्त नजर आ रहे हैं जो स्टोरी uh, शेयरिंग भी चल रही है स्पीकर पार्टिसिपेशन भी है क्योंकि जब तक आप अपनी सीट आके क्लेम नहीं करते कि यू नो आई एग्जिस्ट एंड आई हैव नॉलेज एंड आई कैन शेयर दैट नॉलेज नो बडी नो बडी विल लिसन टू यू एंड गोइंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन अबाउट ए लाइशिप सो आई थिंक दैट वॉज प्रॉबली स्लाइटली अ डिफरेंट ट्वेस्ट दैट पाकिस्तानी women in computer introduced uh, in in especially in kyunki hamare naam mein women hai to log bahut sare samajhte hain ki we only uh, uh, you know there is a preconceived notion ke only khawateen ke liye aur uske i think hamare thode se experiences yahan wahan pe thode differ differ karte hain uh, jo pehli dafa jab main jhc pe gayi thi i took my husband and my son with me because my son was only a year and a half old मैं उसको पीछे छोड़ के नहीं जा सकती थी लेकिन मुझे कॉन्फ्रेंस पे जाने का भी बहुत शौक था सो मैं जितनी कॉन्फ्रेंस पे जाती थी वो दोनों मेरे साथ जाते थे सो दे हैड फर्स्ट हैंड एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ सीइंग एवरीथिंग दैट वाज हैपनिंग देयर और उसके बाद जो भी जब कभी किसी को हम इनवाइट करते हैं लाइक तो यू नो माय माय फैमिली वाज पार्ट ऑफ इट एंड देन देन व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड दिस चैप्टर लॉन्च इन सीएटल 
uh, the same thing happened. And Seattle has a really good mix of working uh, families. Usme dono husband and wife. There, you'll find a lot of people working in Amazon, Microsoft. Both of them working there. So, vojis uh, automatically a khud se ban gayi ke hume jo hai wo ek female only community banani nahi padi kyunki hamari apni family ya hamare jo uh, life partners hain hamare jo colleagues hain they started showing interest and shuru ke kuch dinon mein hame bahut sari stories bhi aise submit hui for example i would like to mention ishfaq ismail he sent a story he, both ishfaq and sarwat they are part of pwic and ishfaq sent a story of uh, uh his uh, wife uh, sarwat jisne uh, abhi next panel mein bhi honge sarwat so sarwat ki story he ishfaq sen and that was really interesting for me ke koi you know uh, that as as a as a husband and as a partner he was also very proud of what you know sarwat was doing so that's how pwic got a little we 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 included men uh, because they were already part of Uh, all the events, all the uh, mentoring programs, and everything, and we thought that we did not, at least in within PWIC, we didn't want to create a uh, an echo chamber. Just me, sir, we are talking about issues, and we are not going to listen to anyone else. Now, what I am looking at from this whole activity is that we have included both sides, and we are taking a lead here. Whatever we are doing in the group, we are taking a lead here. Whatever we are doing in the group, we are taking a lead here. Whatever we are doing in the group, we are taking a lead here. वो इस चीज को उनके लिए भी लर्निंग है कि कैसे उन्होंने नेविगेट करना है जहाँ पे खातन है और हमारे लिए भी है कि हमने कैसे नेविगेट करना है सो आई थिंक इट्स अ लर्निंग इट्स अ वेरी डिफरेंट टेक ऑन ऑन कम्युनिटी बिल्डिंग बट अगर आप लर्निंग एंड ग्रोथ की बात करते हैं तो उसमें मेरे ख्याल में it, अगर आप जेंडर को आ, उसके अंदर आप दोनों जेंडर को इंक्लूड करें तो आपकी जो ग्रोथ और लर्निंग है वो ज्यादा तेजी से हो सकती है सो दैट्स दैट्स वट पी डब्ल्यू आई सी इज that's amazing i'm i'm actually part of pwic most of the people know about it um and i feel like pwic is 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 such a good platform to start off with because mera mera to koi i had no connection at all in the tech domain so it was through pwic that i got to meet him meme and then i got to learn about uh, ijad labs uh, park tech summit and then also women in tech pk and now with ramla so i feel like mera network up you know like grow kiya hai you know like which i didn't have before at all and also the fact that you spoke about jhc and having to have people to you know review your application and stuff like that maine abhi apply kiya the jhc which of course you know but some of the people who don't know i was very you know um kya kehte hain scared to apply kyunki mujhe tha mera koi tech background nahi hai to shayad main nahi mujhe select nahi karenge or whatever blah blah but i had the people from pwic to review my application to tell me what's good what's bad what to add what not to add and that's how i gained the confidence of applying so you know when you when you talk about having to have the support you know for people who are new um and also you know who need kind of some guidance i feel like it has it has proven that um my question is for you shamim um aapka ek interview maine padha tha it was very interesting you know uh, it spoke a lot about you know what motivated you to do the work that you're doing for code girls pakistan usme ek statement hai which really kind of stood out to me uh, in that uh, you said basically it took you 15 years to establish your career and now you want the girls to do it in 5 what basically uh, you meant uh, in saying that uh, like broadly speaking or you know if there's a specific issue that you know you're trying to talk about um can you can you please elaborate on that please so yeah um i'm going to be very um, careful about time right now because it's already 45 minutes and you know we all like to talk a lot because obviously we've done we we worked so hard and we were really want to um brag about did um Can you guys hear me? I yeah. lost you for a while. Not yeah, sure you. Yeah, you. Me. Okay. No, it's okay. We can hear you now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, going back to uh, what uh, um, you know, um, uh, Homa was saying uh, initially, and um, why we uh, we think that that I think that I need these girls to be there in five years is uh, before I do that, I wanna I wanna sort of like emphasize on why. why code girls is a little different from these other initiatives that we have and what sector 
I am trying to, uh, you know, focus on that. So, um, Alhamdulillah, Ramla, Faiza, and Huma have all been very lucky to finish their education, you know, degrees before they get into this. I have not, right? And I'm very honest and upfront about it. I was, uh, I have been, um, I have not been able to do that. Having said that, um, Alhamdulillah, I think out of all of us, um, I'm the only one who has a um, company which is in growth phase right now with a team of around 80 people, you know, with a customer footprint in the US, Europe, and in Canada. Okay. So this is, this is what I wanted. This was my dream. And Faiza and my other partner, Hasnan Walji, uh, you know, made, uh, made sure that I was able to take it uh, forward is to to tell these girls from um, from those uh, you know low to uh, to middle class families that who, who weren't who were either not able to complete their education because of financial reasons or because they got married early or because they didn't think stem was for them that they can and and they looked up to me as as a role model that they can uh, that I was just like them back then and that with hard work and dedication and having a right the right growth path you can actually get there and you can do much better right so that was the so the code girls is a little different like that so we focus on that sector that that part of the society right so so that is that is the motivation behind code girls that i wanted to make sure that everyone understands uh, um, you know the audience understands now when you say 15 years to five years definitely so when i like i said when i joined it was very very lonely and i had to sort of like fight my way to get to things and you know there were no role models at that point and um, um you know you had no direction you had no inspiration you couldn't say Kya yaar, i'm going to learn from your mistakes so what i tell them is learn from my mistakes learn from faiza's mistakes you know learn from what look at huma as a role model look at ramla as a role model and learn from us instead of you know taking so we we would we did a lot of hit and run you know you hit you have a failure you learn you move forward you hit and i'm not saying failures are wrong please don't take me wrong failures are really good but if you can learn from other people's failures and you know save that time what's wrong with that right so this is what we are trying to basically inculcate in these girls to learn and we bring role models to them every other week every other month to for them to talk to them and see what went wrong from for them and to learn from that one of the other things that we've done at Code Girls and like, you know, Ramla and Faiza and whom I very, very rightly, you know, pointed out is uh, the, uh, the, the, the biasness in the, in the workplace and, and, and in, in the corporate sector, be it Silicon Valley, be it Pakistan. Faiza and I have been interviewing a lot of people from around the world, from Oslo, Sweden, Silicon Valley. We've been doing a lot of that for uh, with regard to the uh, you know, diversity committee that we're running. So we know the percentage of... Um, um, you know, women in workplaces in the tech industry. But uh, so what I'm, uh, what I was um, trying to say is that, so what we are trying to do is we are trying to, instead of, to be trying to work in two areas, work with the men, because we have the network, we can leverage on that. Me and uh, Faiza both have the network. We are penetrated into the tech, tech industry in Pakistan. So we work with that side, the CXOs, to make, make sure that they understand how important it is to have a diverse set of people on the table why it's important and then to work with these girls you know on the grassroots level so not just teaching them coding but also non coding skills so making sure that they they are able to tackle with that imposter syndrome that you know i can't i i just can't do this so so that teaching them entrepreneurship skills financial literacy skills so most of these girls don't even know how to write a check right or we are hum hum hamara khwab ye hai ke 6 mahine ke baad 8 mahine ke baad hum inko industry mein lagayenge so, yeah. so, so coding is not the only area that we're working with because a lot of these girls, uh, some of these girls also go to second and third universities like SMIU and you know other universities, but they still don't get into the industry. They don't get into the mainstream. Why? Because they don't think they're good enough. So making them think that you are good enough is, is the bigger challenge that we are working towards. Or Alhamdulillah, that has, we, we, we have proven record. So because we want to see that what we are doing is actually showing results. So uh, out of the 500, 600 people that we have trained so far, around 150, 200 we have trained um, 
in advanced tracks. So like eight, they've done around eight months or a year with us. And out of those 150, 200, if 80 of them got jobs in the industry, I think that's an achievement. So it is very hard to sort of like inculcate that into them that you can do it. So, you know, um, with that, yeah, I would just want to, um, that, that is what I meant when I said I did 15 years, you can do, you can get there in five years. Because you, you learned the hard yeah. way. You, you went through all these obstacles in life. You understood that, oh, it's actually a very easy process, but I can make that, that process easier for other there people, nobody, you know, rather than nobody to tell me at that point what is right and what is wrong, but we are here to tell them, right? But even having said that, I still like the idea of learning from your own mistakes. I do, but not always, even if you can save time. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. Um, we have very less time. I am really so inspired already, you know, by all of you knowing the kind of journeys that you've been through, um, you know, the kind of obstacles that you faced, whether they were minor or major, they actually open a can of worms, basically, to, to show us, to tell us that, you know, there are so many problems, you know, out there, which still needs to be resolved. And we are here as people, you know, as, as women, you know, who, who are there to fill that gap or to, you know, like kind of um, overcome, help overcome that challenge in some way. And um, the last question I'll ask everybody, you know, before, you know, we, we, we end the session, um, what advice would you give to both men, women, girls, boys in, in helping um, us expand this community? Is, is there a way each of your uh, respective uh, organizations or communities that you've built, how can we participate and what kind of advice would you give us, uh, you know, to, to help, you know, with that, with that goal? Um, just briefly touching upon that, knowing that we have a uh, very less time. So if Ramla, you can go first. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I will just branch upon the experience that we have on ground with WAB. Um, for, for, we do, like I mentioned previously as well, we do like school outreach, right? And most of these schools have been in underserved areas of Pakistan. And most of these schools have been in all girls schools in Pakistan. Uh, to community listening, to people who are, who are willing to help out, please know that when you walk into such schools, please don't resort to teaching people, teaching those kids robotics all of a sudden. You're bound to intimidate them further. These are the girls who have internet use at home, who have never used a laptop to their hands. If you give them a machine, denge, you are only bound to scare them and increase their fear of math and physics and computing and programming far more. What we do with WPs are we introduce something called game-based learning, which is not a new concept. And the idea is not to teach someone rocket science. The idea is to make these girls feel at home, teach them through games. Physics is all around us in everything. And that's how we do a lot of the STEM outreach. In this STEM outreach, we also, we this STEM outreach is done by our campus ambassadors across the country. Um, and campus ambassador teams, we mandate a 20, minimum 20% 20 participation needs to be from boys and we get laughed at and those boys get la get laughed at sometimes ki tum ladke ho ke kya uh, women engineers pakistan ke sath kaam kar but it's very important to realize ki when these boys walk into a classroom full of young girls and then tell them ki ha bhi aap engineer ban sakti hain aur ye dekhiye ye itni xyz role models hain aapke samne not only are these men you know, giving these little girls a green signal, but when these girls graduate, okay, work space, pe jayenge, they will be more okay with having female colleagues. So my, my advice to young boys is please reach out and see, you are part of this. Gender parity is your just as much your responsibility as it is ours. Sara ka sara bo juska ham par mat dalen, hamare saath kam karein. There is so much space for you. There's so many solutions that we can bring in together. Um, please get rid of this elitism that we have in this gender. Ki bhai falana kama kalay, falane ko nahi pata. Aaj ki dunia mein har koi har cheez kar sakta hai. You just need to have some amount of bravery and consistency and i would like to uh finish with that be brave and be consistent thank you so much that is that is so inspiring really um faiza 
Okay. So there is only one advice that I give people all the time is to pick up a book. That's the best thing you can do to yourself, both yeah. um, both girls and boys, both men and women, uh, however you may identify. Yeah, that all the time. I just don't get it. Yeah, I keep on telling people, yeah. So uh, the idea, if, if you want to understand how the world works, uh, your conventional wisdom tells you to be on the streets. But no, you need to be inside the books to get to know how the world works because our context is so small. I'm based in Karachi, so um, Karachi is my context. But until or unless I open up myself to other people's experiences and how they work and how they deal with things, I won't be able to uh, you know, know about the world uh, that it is. So it's extremely important pe for people uh, you know, to read. Every year I have a theme about something that I'm going to learn this year. Last year it was about, I wanted to uh, learn about gender equal equality. So I read around 20 books on feminism. This year I'm learning about wow. race because of whatever is happening. So around 17 books are in my TBR so that I can finish them by the year end. The idea is to basically open up myself and then see how things relate um, when it comes to different problems around the world and it's not that we don't have racism or we don't have issues with you know other other problems in pakistan but everyone need you know kind of needs to pick up a book and read sometimes because it's extremely important um and it builds a lot of empathy as well so yeah thank you so much for for sharing that um because i feel like books are are like you know, it's like a like a new world that you enter, and I've 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 been into books for a very long time, so I I can totally you know I'll vouch for that um, advice. Um, Huma, would you like to go next? Yes, um, I have a uh, small attention span, so I start books and I then I leave books. So I prefer traveling, uh, and that's that has been my um you know favorite thing to do and i think i have learned a lot about so if you travel if you expose yourself in in places where you have never been it gives you uh, a different you know it, it basically breaks stereotypes uh, at so many levels um so hum would faiza ne jo baat ki ki context wo context aur apna jo aapka jo uh, wo aap tabhi increase kar sakte hain jab aap dusre logo se mile unke sath baat kare chahe wo different race hai different gender hai different um you know unka unka experience is different hai so uh, that's that's why i i think traveling if after this covid hopefully this covid whenever this thing will go away uh, make sure that you travel if you can digitally travel but it reach out to people uh, and never stop learning so uh, I always, uh, you know, I always um, uh, try to get into into a room where I'm the least learned person, so I can learn from the people around me. Or that thing has become um, so empowering. मुझे पहले लगता था कि शायद मेरा जो मुझे कुछ आता ही नहीं है, लेकिन बाद में वो समझ आई कि it's it's as actually it has to do with learner and you know growth mindset that you always feel like you need to learn more. So never stop learning and never stop reaching out to people. एक जो community की का जो सबसे बड़ी strength है वो ये है कि it's it's a collective wisdom and it's collective growth. आप individually जितना मर्जी grow कर लें, individually आप जितने मर्जी you know बहुत आप चीजें achieve कर लें, लेकिन अगर आप उस अपनी success को शेयर नहीं कर रहे नॉलेज को शेयर नहीं कर रहे तो सिर्फ फिर आप ही होंगे अकेले जो टॉप पे होंगे बाकी सब लोग uh, वो स्ट्रगल कर रहे होंगे सो एंड दैट्स व्हाट पीडब्ल्यूआईसी इज दैट्स व्हाट दैट्स हाउ आई स्पेंड माय लाइफ आई ट्राई टू यू नो शेयर एज मच एंड लर्न एज मच एज आई कैन एंड दैट्स वट द विजन इज कलेक्ट लर्न एंड ग्रो टूगेदर लाइक ब्रिंग दिस कलेक्टिवनेस ब्रिंग दिस लेट्स डू इट टूगेदर ग्रो टूगेदर um and that's my that's my message um i agree with you on the fact ke aapko travel karna chahiye because until unless you don't do that you're not you're not going to be able to come out of your own shell you know aap agar logon se nahi milenge and i think that i started doing a long long time ago which is why i was able to meet so many amazing people so thank you so much for that advice uh shamim um would you like to go next i mean you're the last one so <laughs> I'll wrap it up. I'll wrap it up for the ladies. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. So, uh, 
देखिए वेन यू वेन यू आर ज्वाइनिंग एनी कम्युनिटी और यू वेन यू वॉन्ट टू बी पार्ट ऑफ एनी कम्युनिटी द फर्स्ट थिंग द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर इज वॉट वैल्यू आर यू एडिंग टू दैट कम्युनिटी आर यू इज दैट अ मैच दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट जस्ट ज्वाइनिंग अ कम्युनिटी बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली मेरे प्रोफाइल पर अच्छा लगेगा बिकॉज इट्स अ ह्यूज नेटवर्क दैट आई एम गोइंग टू लेवरेज ऑन राइट it will it 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 may be it may be it may give you short term gains but in the long run it's not going to be helpful to you so you have to understand community or no community you need to start doing whatever you the first thing that you find that this is going to add value this is going to help the people just start with that's how we all started right that's all that's our story that's how we we never thought of communities we just thought ki ye problem hai isko solve karna hai so if you have that thought in mind then join a community at that where you are you add value so that's one thing but before i close this i just want to make sure that I, because i'm addressing so many women and i'm, I'm hoping that there's a, there's a good women audience here one of the things that i've seen with women is that uh, social media pe hame koi bhi uh, ungli karta hai na so we start to react we are very reactive and hum jo hai wo clan bana ke shuru ho jate hain theek hai ladies pick your fight okay so you have you has you have the energies that you have choose them right okay so pick your fight uh, don't always get okay, so if 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 you if somebody pokes you take a back step think about it take a deep breath that that's what we do with our customers right the customer naraz ho gaya ek bekar se email aa gayi you don't write that instance that's that's the worst thing to do you close the laptop lid you take a back step you take a deep breath and you think about it think about what why did this provoke him to him him to do so why did this provoke him to say so right and you will see most of the time that okay 80% is his fault and 20% is my fault my as in what i'm saying i'm talking about the gender theek hai and and aisa har dafa nahi hota lekin kabhi kabhi aisa hota hai so we need to then then and then answer with a cool mind so you have to be smart and diplomatic if you are going to change anything today and and in the next 5 years remember we have a long long way to go this is not done here we've just started right so we have a long long way to go and if you're going to change anything it's going to be a combination of everything so you have to be loud but you also have to be smart and you also have to be diplomatic it's, it's a combination of all of that so i think uh, if that uh, message gets across i think it's a win win uh, faiza might Very not well agree she has some other thought but then which is why we both think so well because we we cover each other's areas you know so uh, we back each other in that way we, we complement each other that way yeah no diplomacy for me sorry not happening yeah i actually which is why, um, which is why i am the diplomatic one so we, that is why i said we complement each other so well i was on the diplomacy yeah. side as well a little bit i mean we have to get work done right ladai mein time lag jata hai Exactly, yeah, right. it's like a it's like a waste, you know. You got to strategize, no, think but, about k okay, what's going to be good. To be honest, we have to keep the pressure going. So we need people like those who keep the pressure going. But then we also need people who can be diplomatic and make sure that they clean up each other. Okay, get the job done as well. Exactly. Oh my! So I'm gonna end the session in just like a few minutes. I would like to thank all of you, Ramla, Faiza, Shamim, Homa, for. for being on this panel today and for sharing your your knowledge your expertise and your advice to the young and the old generation and also touching upon important like issues which basically people don't give attention to for example ramla you spoke about you know the, the women toilets were missing that's like a, such a big you know like shock and i am i can understand what you must have gone through um and you know like shimim talking about you know young girls being scared and then huma also talking about you know like depending on like not really depending but also bringing in men into into the conversations which is so important and faiza you um basically opening opening up forums you know for 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 people to ask for help i think that's these are all important points that we sort of miss out on like main apna example dungi because main apne aap ko samajhti thi at some point you know a few months ago that i wasn't you know i couldn't be part of a tech community but this um you know being part of uh, pivic and then um moving on to meeting everybody all of you connecting with all of you amazing women i realized that there is there is a place for me too you know like it doesn't matter ki mai kaun se background se hu mera kya hai you know experience what not 
um, it's it's just about being welcomed. And that's something also that, you know, many people need to realize that you're welcome to be part of the community. You just got to ask that and be like, is, is there a place for me? And I think that's when, you know, um, uh, the door of opportunities, you know, can can open for you. Um, so I'm, I'm really thankful to all of you for giving your your precious time and sharing, um, you know, your 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 knowledge with us. Um, with that, I'm going to end the session. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Bye. 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 Bye.